In this project, we're going to be making a very simple portable fan. You can turn it on and off and control the speed of the fan. In my previous video, we made a much more sophisticated and powerful wireless fan with lots of features. So check that out if you're interested. I wanted to make this portable fan mainly for barbecues to blow on the coals to make them burn hotter. However, you can of course use it for anything else. It's a very nice little simple project to do and learn a few things from. So let's get started and see what it's all about. There are only three parts to this project. There is the main housing part, and a bottom lid, and a top lid. The top lid is added for easy access to the wires and to easily insert a DC motor into place, which is held down in this little housing. We are going to be using a DC motor for the spinning of the fan. You can pretty much use any DC motor for this project. I use one that has an RPM of 24,000, which operates within 1.5 to 6 volts. The key learning point of this project is how we can control the speed of a DC motor. Now how a DC motor works is the speed of the motor depends on the voltage that is applied to it. So the higher the voltage, the faster it is and lower the voltage, the slower the motor is. And there's multiple ways we can do this. The most simple way and first that come to mind is to use a potentimeter, which is pretty much a variable resistor. A potentimeter has three pins, ground, output, and VCC. Let's say we have a five volt power supply and we connect a potentimeter, the ground and VCC, and the output of the potentimeter goes to a DC motor. So the lower the resistance of the potentimeter has as we turn it, the lower the voltage it will consume and more voltage will go to the DC motor, making it go faster. And if we turn the potentimeter the other way, increasing its resistance, the voltage drop across it will be higher, meaning the DC motor will get less voltage, hence it will be slower. Now this will seem to be a very good way of doing it, but it's actually very inefficient and not recommended at all. So although this method is very simple, it's not a great choice. Another way of controlling the speed of a DC motor is using a DC motor driver, which is probably the best option and what is mostly used. For example, the L298 motor driver. However, not for this project, since it is way too big and will be an overkill for such a small project and motor. Another way to control the speed of a DC motor is to use a PWM signal which if you're not familiar with, it's pretty much a voltage signal that turns on and off very fast depending on what speed you set it. For example, if we have a 6 volt power supply and half of the time the signal is on and the other half is off, this means that on average we will have a voltage of 3 volts which will mean that the DC motor will run in half of its top speed if 6 volts was its max rated voltage. And that's pretty much what a PWM signal is. We can easily get a PWM signal from a microcontroller, for example, the Atani 85. This is a very small microcontroller and works just like any Arduino. It's very small and relatively inexpensive, which makes it perfect for this kind of project. Now you may think that we can just connect a DC motor directly to the Atani 85 for the PWM signal. However, we cannot do this because the motor draws way too much current than what the microcontroller can handle, which will destroy it. So to overcome this issue, we need to use a MOSFET. If you don't know what a MOSFET is, it's pretty much a powerful switch that we can turn on and off using electricity rather than physically like a push button. So for example, if we have this simple circuit and a LED connected to a MOSFET, now whenever we supply a certain voltage to the gate of the MOSFET, the MOSFET will switch on and the circuit will go on like normal. So the LED will turn on because the circuit is completed. However, if we remove the voltage, the MOSFET switches off and the LED also switches off because there is now an open circuit. The MOSFET is off or you can say that the switch is open. Now rather than manually controlling the voltage at the gate of the MOSFET, we can control it using a PWM signal from a microcontroller, in our case, the Tiny85. 
and instead of the LED, we have our DC motor. So now, the faster the PWM signal is on, on average, the DC motor is getting more voltage, which means it would go faster, and vice versa. This method is very reliable and works very well just by using a few and simple components. So this is great. The MOSFET that I'm using is the IRF3708. You can use any MOSFET, but you have to make sure that it is a logic level MOSFET. Otherwise, you're not going to have a good time like I initially did. Now to actually control the speed of the PWM signal, which is referred to the duty cycle, we will use a potentimeter connected to the iTiny85. So using an analog to digital converter pin on the iTiny, we can convert the voltage output of the pot into an electric value, which we can then use to control the PWM speed. I use the 10k ohms potentimeter. We also need to use a diode across the DC motor. The reason we need a diode is when the power is off, the motor will still spin for a few moments, which may cause a negative voltage spike, which can damage the microcontroller, and we don't want that to happen. For the power supply for this project, I wanted to use a battery that can be easily rechargeable, so I chose the 18650 battery, and to allow for charging, I used a board that takes care of all of that, based on the TP4056 chip which you can get very easily and works great. You just need to connect the battery to its battery in and out pins, and it gives you two output pins, positive and negative, and a micro USB connection to easily charge the battery. We also need a way to turn the fan on and off, so we need to add a switch. I use the simple sliding switch. Now, since the voltage of a battery is not stable and goes down over time as it is used, the Tiny85 will not work properly because it doesn't have a stable power supply. So we need to add a voltage regulator. I use the MCP1700 3.3 volts voltage regulator with two capacitors soldered directly on it. A 1000 or 100 microfarad capacitor and a 100,000 picofarad capacitor to deal with voltage spikes and keep the signal smooth. And that right there is the full circuit for this project. Here is the same circuit but on a breadboard for convenience and here is the actual circuit on the breadboard. Something to note here, for some components, for example the MOSFET and the potentimeter, the legs are slightly too large for the breadboard and if you insert them directly into the breadboard, you will actually damage the breadboard connections permanently, which unfortunately happened to me when I first did this. So to overcome this, I used a strip board like this one and connected female and male header pins, which can then be easily connected and not damage your breadboard while using these components with large pins. I just thought to share this with you, which may help some of you. Upload the code to the Tiny, which you can find in the video description, as well as instructions on how to upload code to the Tiny microcontroller. Once you have connected everything together, turn it on using a switch and test that everything is working properly by adjusting the speed of the DC motor using the potentimeter. After confirming that everything is working properly on the breadboard, I then use the strip board to make the wiring compact and convenient. Here's the diagram of the strip board if needed. Take careful note of the cuts made in the strip board. After making the strip board, it should look something like this. Now all that is left to do is simply assemble all of this in the housing. To attach the DC motor, I used blue tack all around the cylinder part of the motor and inserted it for a tight fit. To secure the bottom lid, I used threaded insert nuts with 3mm bolts. I also used blue tack to secure the battery and support to the walls to ensure there is no moving parts inside. Insert the top lid and just like that we have a portable fan that you can control the speed of and use for whatever reason you want. Now the main takeaway of this project is not really the final product but is to learn how to control the speed of a DC motor effectively which is demonstrated very nicely in this project. And that's all the video done and whoever is still listening till the end of the video right now, 
I really appreciate you. Remember to also subscribe so you don't miss any project in the future. And if you have any feedback on this video, on how I present the project and all that, please comment below and give me some feedback on the videos and how I can maybe improve them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next project.